Hello, Milwaukee. This is Pastor Walter Owens of New Life International Ministry. This is the day that our Lord and Savior has made, and boy, we're going to really rejoice in it. Along with myself and my partner in Christ, Pastor Charles Zimmer. We welcome all our listeners to our weekly broadcast show, Focus 2020. As believers in Christ, we must have a 2020 vision and a transformative mindset to live and abide and walk in the plan and the will God has for your life. Hello, everybody. This is Pastor Walter Owens right here at Joy 1340 AM and 98.7 FM for our weekly broadcast, Focus 2020. Pastor Charles, thank you for that. You know, I was so impressed with you last week. And what I was so impressed with when I was watching the football game, you took me back to John Madden with that kind of dark, what do you call it, that turkey, the one that had the six legs? I don't even know. You cooked it? I ain't cooked no six-leg turkey. <laughs> well, what was you feeding your guests? We was all thought we was eating turkey. That wasn't no turkey. <laughs> you weren't in my house. This is somebody else's house. Oh, no, boy, boy. Well, man, that, that wasn't did. your house. Good. That wasn't that, that was your house because you had that – that green cranberry sauce, <laughs> but but <laughs> but thank you in a, thank you anyway for for, 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 for 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 being being back here with us today. Won't you introduce yourself? Can you do that? I am Pastor Charles Emery. No aliases. No alias today. Okay. I'll be myself today. God, I just want to thank you for this day. Thank you for uh, making sure that he received his medicine, that his mindset is back. We do not know how long it's going to last, but he's here with us today. So, Father, we pray that we can get through this because last week we was talking about Thanksgiving, giving thanks. And I just want to take this time this week to say thank you for letting my friend, my co-host, be with us. And I don't know how long it's going to last, but right now, why are you laughing? <laughs> You missed your other calling. You should have been a comedian. I want to be a chef like you. That's why I want to talk about from last week, we was talking about Thanksgiving oh, Lord, yeah. and the love that we should have for our people. But I have a special, a special request today, and I want you to help us understand this here. I know uh, a lot of you last week, I pray that you all had a wonderful time. We did at our household. We had a wonderful time with our family and friends. But some families, as we was talking uh, last week, Pastor, there come a time where there are unwanted or unwelcome guests that shows up at your house. Mm, 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 mm. My, my, my. That's yeah, something. That's something. Unwelcome, unwelcome guests, guests come and show up at your house to eat up all your turkey. And you know one thing about the unwelcome guest? It all stems back to Genesis chapter 3. Come on, Pastor. Um, beginning in verse 1, it says, The serpent was more shrewdest. I'm going to go into King James. I'm in the New Living Translation. Excuse me. It said, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he, had, and he said to the woman, Yea, has God said, You shall not eat of the tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And I was um, ministering on this on last week, Sunday, and the Spirit of the Lord uh, gave me this, this uh, title in a dream, and I began to hear the Spirit of God conversing. I was talking to someone in my dream about this particular passage of Scripture. And I begin to hear God say the unwelcome guest. And he says the unwelcome guest is the enemy that we allowed into our home. So even during the Thanksgiving season, the holiday, I pray that you had a safe holiday and that you kept the unwelcome guest away because a lot of times the enemy comes like he did with, with Eve in the garden. He comes with tricky and deception, tricky Come on. ways of deception. Yes, yes, yes. Because yes. he knew if I can connive and deceive her to twisting the word of God, I can get her entrapped. I always go back to the book, The Bait of Satan, because Satan wants to bait us. If he can bait you to turn from truth. And one thing Satan said to her, he said, Did not God say unto you, should I eat uh, of every tree in, in of the garden? And God never told them they shouldn't eat from every tree. He told them don't eat from the tree of good and evil, the tree in the midst of the garden. And so one thing she said, she added a twist to the words of God 
by saying that God told us, don't eat the tree, don't touch the tree, or we're going to surely die. God never said don't touch the tree. And one thing about it, that unwelcome guest, he has a way of manipulating your mind to make you believe something that sounds true is not true. Amen. You know, I like that when you said, uh, and we were talking about unwanted guests, you know, in our homes. And we have to be very careful. And I share this with our congregation and people that I meet when we into a conversation like this. You have to be very careful who you allow into your household. You got to be very careful who you invite, as you call your friends, associate to be around. Because we're living in a times now is that if I know that you are doing the work for Christ, I'm going to do, especially if I have a motive. That's the key word. If I have a motive to take you from what God has for you, I could do just like what you read here in Genesis. I could say one thing, but how are you perceiving it? Right. Because, right. you know, if you look at it, you said uh, in verse uh, Genesis 3, I like that passage when you said the first verse, now the serpent was more cunning. Other words, he had a motive, and he knew mm-hmm. who to attack. That's and it's it, just like it. if you do not stand up for the rights, and I want you all to get this here. When we're saying an uh, unwelcome, uh, unwelcome guest, a lot of people think we are talking about coming, knocking at your door, coming in your house. Pete. This is this is your house. You, you follow me? This is your house, and you got to be very careful who you allow and and what you're listening to because people have a cunning way of destroying you. And if you follow what they're saying, you do just like Eve did. You're going to twist the word. But the thing that I learned, we was talking about that earlier, Pastor, is that God gave her a word. She knew the word. And when the enemy came, instead of her using the word to protect her home, she fell in this trap. You're right, because she wanted to, um, what's the, what's the woman's word? She wanted to um, cover up what was about to take place in her life. So the enemy was testing her. Not only that, so she wanted to be defensive now. Instead of being proactive, she'd been reactive to the voice of the enemy. And we recognize the enemy is the snake that came into the garden. And not only that, uh, it was Satan behind the snake that caused him to speak to the woman. Come on, so come on, come on. So Satan spoke to her, instead of her uh, uh, listening to the voice of, of God, what God had already gave her command of what not to do, she allowed the enemy to persuade her. So now I'm in a position where I have to defend myself because I, I'm in a vulnerable state, and that's what we do a lot of times. We get in a place of vulnerability where we know what God had instruction God has given us. We allow the enemy to come through other people, and cause us to deny the truth that God has spoken to our hearts. And I was thinking of how, like, when you have people coming to your home, some people don't need to come to your house because of the, you know they got a foul spirit. They yes, negative. Yes, and every yes. time they come around, an outburst breaks out, and it's always confusion. And if you know that individual and you don't pray for this person, you try to be uh, uh, loving to this person, try to be kind to this person, and they just refuse to change. You need to cut yourself off from whether it be family member or not family member because the more you entertain a fool, you can become a fool. You know what? <laughs> you sound like it's you was in the, the book. Of, it's in the word. That sound like the book of Proverbs, yes. Pastor. And one thing that I love about what you were saying as we was reading and we are talking about this unwelcome guest that you allow in your house, in your life, is that that person is very clever. Very. That's why I always share with people, Satan knows who you are, but you don't know. That's it. And and I said that to say this here is because, as Pastor was just sharing with us, the enemy, he's around you enough. He began to learn your ways. He knows what you like. He knows what button to push. And he will make you realize that you're not who you say you are. That's right, because he wants you to doubt your own ability, what God has created you to be and the power that God has given to you. And one thing, a, a lot of believers in today's time, you can go to church 30, 40, 50 years and still don't know the power that you have that you expose it from the Lord. And Jesus told his disciples in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, the serpent, the snake in the garden. Come on. He said, I gave you power over that snake. He says, and he says, and no matter what the enemy does, he says, you have power to overcome the enemy. But we don't know the word. So we allow the enemy to manipulate us 
to doubt God's word when we we claim we know God, we claim we got a relationship with God, we claim we're servants of the Most High God, we claim that I, I'm living in the presence of God until testing time comes. So when it, like the enemy, when he came to test Adam and Eve in the garden, Adam was with her. She wasn't by herself when the enemy came to test her. And that's one thing God t- showed me too was that we can be in a relationship and you claim to know God, God's truth of his word, and yet you allow one person in your relationship to lead you astray from truth. When you claim to be one who's serving God, consecrated, living for God every day, but until they bring something to you that's more satisfying and pleasing to your flesh, you're ready, ready to give up your relationship with Christ to follow a lie. Hey, Pastor, let's take a quick break. Hey, I'm Pastor Walter Owens, along with my co-host, Pastor Charles Emery. You know, Pastor, I want to welcome all our listeners to join us for our weekly broadcast, which is Focus 2020, and they can find us where? At Joy 1340 AM and 98.7 FM every Thursday at 2.30 PM. And what will they receive once they get here? They receive a word from the Lord, and I guarantee you will be blessed. Amen. That is powerful because, uh, you know, I'm looking at Genesis 3 and 1. The word is uh, more clever, are different from the words the Bible used before in Genesis 1 and 2. The Bible used the word. The Bible used the word. The word of God is showing us that it's very good not to be ashamed. It's beautiful. Genesis 2 and 9, these words show us the good things that God has made for you and I. But in Genesis 3, as you were reading and explaining this to us, Pastor, we see a change in the language. When the snake shows up, and it, it, it keeps saying that how clever he is, mm-hmm. you know, and, and God has given us his word. He said, I want you, I want you, I want you to trust and believe and have your faith in me. I always share, Pastor, when it comes to God, there's three things that we we should do constantly, constantly to know and and give thanks to God and show him how much we love. First of all, do you have faith in me? Second, do you believe me? Number three, do you trust me? If you take either one of those out, you're going to be lost. Because when God gave her the word, and like you said, it was both of them, Adam and Eve. And when he gave them the, the instruction, she had the word, but she's listening to this lying tongue, this two-edged sword tongue that took her out of her rightful place in Christ. In other words, I'm going to call it spiritual treason. Yeah, that's it. A traitor. I've given you this God. That's why I always ask people all the time, why is it that God gave us this beautiful garden? He put you and I in it. And he said, Pastor, you can have everything in the studio. Everything. Everything. Notice he said everything in the studio. But don't go up and touch that sign. And you do it anyway. Why? Because of temptation. And that's what the enemy does. He presents something that looks a pleasing, pleasing to the eyes to bait you to give into temptation. And that's what a lot of times we do. We fall into the entrapment. Of the enemy, I remember a movie that Sean Connor, Connors came out with years ago, back in the, I think in the early '80s. It was The Entrapment. It was about this young woman who was who was a thief. Yes, she, yes, yes. You know, he was trying to teach her how to be the best thief. So and even to be entrapped, so when you get entrapped, how to escape. And that's what God wants us to always be able to do. The words that there's no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be of the beard. So even though I might be entrapped, I might look like I'm surrounded by the enemy, I'm still surrounded by the Lord, who's my way of escape. So when the enemy think he got the best hand over me, God shows us and nope, guess what? I got you. And here's the way to get out of this. Go that direction. Go that way. You know what, Pastor? Let, let, let's, let's go back because you said something so powerful when you was talking about that movie, when you was talking about entrapment. And and he was teaching her, if you run into a situation, how to get out of it. Yes. And what was it? It was all about her doing something for him that he it can get the glory. Right. It was about the diamond. Yes, it was. And that's what the enemy do. He would entrap us in our mindset 
that's an unwelcome guest that we allow in mm -hmm. that we so caught up in the beauty of the things. It's like, oh, what am I going to get out? Because when the enemy wants you to do something, he always bargain with you. Yeah, that's it. But his motive is to destroy you. That's it. That's it. Because he knows if I can keep you, keep you blindsided from truth, I can destroy every plan and purpose that God has established for your life. And one thing about it, we need to know that God says, I know the thoughts and the plans I, I think towards you to prosper you and do you no harm you expect it in. So if God has a plan, and all I have to do is submit and walk in it. Right, there's no, no effort to try to fix it, no effort to try to make it right. All I have to do is just believe. God says he got a plan. Then, Father, I believe the plan you have for me is going to cause me to be productive and, and prosperous in my life as long as I keep my eyes on you. The word tells us, look unto Jesus, who is the author of the of our faith, who for joy that was set before and endured the cross, despising the shame. So he endured the suffering. We must suffer for Christ's sake, knowing that in the end, that's reward of glory. You know, Pastor, I, I'm so glad that uh, we are doing this today is to let our listeners know to be very careful of unwanted guests and who you allow in because this 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 story here, uh, I never looked at it like I'm seeing it now. Uh, Genesis 3, uh, 1 uh, through 5 and 6. It, it is so powerful because God want to show us the importance of this story. And that's why he was sharing with Adam and Eve. I'm going to tell you the way to go, as Pastor was sharing with us. I'm going to tell you the way to go where you will benefit. All the blessings are there for you. I have provided everything that you're going to ever need before I created you. But I know, the Lord said, I know that there's going to come one that's going to deceive mm -hmm. you. But I'm going to give you this word before he shows up. But I'm going to sit back and watch and see what you do with it. That's and it. what do we it. do? We sit there and listen to the enemy. Because as yeah. we know, he gave Adam and Eve, he gave you and I choices. That's one thing about God. Mm -hmm. He's going to give you a choice. And a lot of people say, well, I don't know why I did that. Before you do it, your conscience is going to kick in. It will. And you know, and that brings me to this point. The first family, the first children, Adam, Adam I mean, uh, uh, Cain and Abel. Come on. So one thing, when I was studying the scriptures, even concerning the message I was going to preach on last week, um, God took me to uh, Genesis chapter 4. And in chapter 4, he was showing me that in the scripture, how God had spoke to uh, uh, Cain and Abel, how he was requiring them to bring a sacrifice to him. And because of the shedding of the blood that God did when Adam and Eve committed sin in the Garden of Eden, he shed blood to clothe them. You remember they tried to hide because they found they were naked after being disobedient. Right, And they right. covered them, made themselves, they said, sewn together some fig leaves to cover their nakedness, right? God said, that ain't good enough. I'm going to show you the point to Christ, even in Genesis, of the garden. Because I'm going to take an animal, I'm going to shed the animal and take the skin of the animal, but also shed the blood for redemption to redeem you even though you fell in the garden. And then I'm going to close you, but I'm going to expel you from the garden. Because I have, if I had let you stay in the state you were in, you would have eternal damnation living in sin. And so God had to take them out of the Garden of Eden. But then he told, told when he cursed them, he said, Adam, you're going you're gonna, to um, begin to work and sweat from your brow. He said, one, you're going to bear children in pain. All these things because of disobedience. So after that, when you get to chapter 4, when God had required them to bring a sacrifice to him, Abel killed one of his best animals and brought it to God. Cain, he had vegetation, but because his heart went right in giving it, that's what God, I was looking at this, and I said, why did God reject Cain's offering? He, he offered him the best of his, his vegetation. God wasn't looking for that. He was looking for the attitude of the giving. His attitude wasn't in the giving. So Cain ended up being angry, and you know, not only that, and then I believe God was looking for blood, looking for the shedding of blood, even in that, that incident. So after that, it says, uh, verse 6, in Genesis chapter 4, 6, it says, The Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Why, in other words, why are you angry? Why is thy countenance fallen? Why are you sad looking? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? If thou doest not well, check this out. This caught my attention. Sin lieth at your door. Sin lies at your door. So the unwelcome guest is looking for the opportunity to come into your heart. Amen. Amen. He can Amen. bring anger, malice, hatred, jealousy, bitterness, 
Uh, whatever sinful temptation he wants to bring into your life is an unwelcome guest. And many times we receive this unwelcome guest because I refuse to submit to God's obedience. You know, Pastor, I'm going to do something right there because you just touched me when you said that. That's so powerful because what we have to do, what we have to do, we're talking about a generation. We're watching what our generation is going through right now. And it comes from the home. And when we're talking about the home, we're talking about the body right now, you and I, the, 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 where God created us, this mm -hmm. body. And look where it all started. What came? It started in the first creation of man. Yes, it did. It Begin. was deceived with the parents. Yeah. And look what the parents did. So the child is watching. And all they knew from their house, that, un, that unwanted guest, this child, when they grew up, they still have that mindset, that mindset to de destroy, that mindset to be manipulative, that mindset is to con you, to to get everything I can out of you, to lie. How are you going to lie to Christ? Mm -hmm. And like you said, is that reason there was a difference is because it was the motive. Yeah, it's the motive. And then when it goes to the second part of that scripture, he says, and unto thee, shall be his desire. He talking about the temptation, the enemy. And thou, he says, and thou shalt rule over him. So in other words, just because I have a desire to do wrong, doesn't mean I have to let it master me. And that's what God was saying. If you don't take control of the desire when it presents itself for you to be tempted to fall into sin, then that desire is going to be mastered over you through sin. Because the enemy takes control of you. Follow me? And that's what God was showing me in this past. He said, because if he says, sin crouches at your door. So sin is crouching my door. If I don't overpower the sin when it's crouching my door, then it, sin is going to overpower me and take control of me. It goes back to Luke 11, I think 11, 17. He says, when a strong man is, at, is armed with his goods in his palace, his goods is at peace. So he said, until a stronger he comes. So when a stronger than he comes, he overpowers the strong man. Sin is the same way. When Christ comes into our lives, he overpowers the strong man of desire to temptation to do wrong. You know, I want to go in reverse. I want to go in reverse. And I want you to bring something because I know you're going to uh, get this. It's like when you say when God give us the word, you know, it's sticking with me, uh, Pastor. That was one word that we was discussing that was so powerful. Now the serpent, as is Genesis 3, I had to go back in reverse because I want y'all to get what he's saying. We got to be very careful how words come to us and how we receive it. You know, now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God has made. And he said, and he said, and he said to the woman, mm -hmm. has God indeed said you shall not eat of any or every tree in the garden? He did not say that. Never said it. And and that's what I'm saying is that what are we allowed that un that unwanted guest in the house. Now we're hearing something different because we want to make it plain because we have a motive. And God has given her the word. He's given us the word to defeat the enemy. That's part of our full arm of God. Yes, it is. Come on, Pastor. And then we want to justify. So we get to the place we want to justify the reason why I made the mistake. And that's one thing, God, when God, I, I, was, I, I love it when, when God said, Adam, where are you? He knew where Adam was, you know? And so when he, and Adam said, Lord, he said, are we hid. He said, I hid because I knew I was naked. He said, who told you he was naked? You know, all because I disobeyed God, now my eyes become open to sin. Yes, so now I have yes. to justify the reason why I did what I did. That's, that's, that's something. That is something, Pastor, because... We want you all to be very careful about who you love. You can tell when you have an unwanted guest coming into your house or trying to get in your house because he's going to change the word. He's going to be so kind and he's going to he's going to make you feel so good because we witness it today in our world how the media would say one thing and it's totally different. But God's word is today tomorrow, and forevermore. Yes, yes, you know, Pastor, it's getting to be that time. I want to, yeah. as always, I want you to give us a, a, a quick prayer and a word of encouragement before we get out of here. Amen. I just want you to um, be encouraged today to be aware of the unwelcome guest that would present itself to you in your church, in your house, in your community, in your neighborhood. 
because the enemy comes in many different forms to tempt, try, and test you to turn away from your faith. But I encourage you to stay in the Word, allow yourself to put on the full armor of God every day to stand against the wiles of the devil. And, Father, we just thank you today, oh, God, for your word. We're going to cross the airways. We pray that it bring conviction to our hearts and, and give us ears to hear your voice in clarity to understand you and, and obey you, Father God. And everything we do, we bring you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And be very careful, again, who knocks on your door because they will come in a Halloween suit. And they will be dressed and smiling and saying that they know you. But if it does not line up with the word of God, run. Somewhere, <laughs> close your doors, your windows, scream, scream, scream for help. Help me, God, because the unwanted one is here. And then I'm going to send my superhero, Pastor Charles Emery. <laughs> oh, boy, yeah, I can see you come out. Dun, dun, dun. Last week, you didn't have your cape on because you ate too much chicken. Hey, again, we love you. I'm Pastor Walter of New Life International Ministry. Until next week, we will see See you and stay blessed. Shalom. Hey, I'm Pastor Walter Owens, along with my co-host, Pastor Charles Emery. You know, Pastor, I want to welcome all our listeners to join us for our weekly broadcast, which is Focus 2020. And they can find us where? At Joy 1340 AM and 98.7 FM every Thursday at 2.30 PM. And what will they receive once they get here? They receive a word from the Lord, and I guarantee you will be blessed. Amen.